Hello, everyone. Uh, so I'm, I'm Matt with PolicyWise for Children and Families. Uh, so if you can just give us one more minute so we get those last uh, people that are just coming in that may be trying to figure out the login process. Uh, and then uh, we'll start up and we'll get into the introductions and then get into the, the actual webinar where you get to learn about uh, Statistics Canada website and, and how to navigate their data. So I'm excited to have you all here and uh, I think this is going to be a fun session. Okay, so just in uh, interest of time and making sure we have enough time to get through everything today, uh, I think we'll we'll start off uh, with uh, some things first, some housekeeping stuff. Uh, was there anything that you wanted to add first, Courtney? Uh, so just letting everybody know that uh, you are muted for uh, the presentation and then we will allow you to unmute at the end for questions. If you do have comments or questions throughout, uh, feel free to put them in the chat uh, and we'll make sure that they get addressed. Uh, I think that's everything. Yep, and, and we'll be trying to, to keep those questions being answered more towards the end, uh, just so we can make sure we get through all the material today and all the introductions and everything. Um, we also have a few Statistics Canada staff here that uh, Darren will be presenting, and we'll have a, a couple others, uh, Sarah and Stuart, uh, that will be supporting with those questions. So um, expect to see them, but we'll have more introductions once we get into things. So uh, that's that in mind, let's get started. So uh, today, uh, this is uh, an Alberta non-profit data strategy meeting uh, in, in terms of our training series uh, related to capacity building the sector. Um, so the first conversation we're having in the series right now is, is talking about Statistics Canada website training. So learning more about how to use their website, how to navigate, how to work through that. Um, so I just wanted to say a, a big thanks to Statistics Canada for coming in and, and joining us today. Uh, and really just saying we're here to support you guys. We want to make sure that uh, we can help you better able to use our things. and. Uh, there's other talk for future presentations as well. So we will engage uh, a little bit the, on, on that midway through and, and give you a voice in terms of the next directions for this type uh, of training. Uh, so some things, some acknowledgements. So first of all, I'd like to acknowledge the Alberta Non-for-Profit Network. Uh, they're one of the big groups that supports us. They're, they're one of our uh, leaders of our steering committee that supports us in these directions and everything. Uh, Edmonton Community Foundation for their funding uh, and Policy Wise for Children and Families and Alberta, uh, the government of Alberta for their funding uh, throughout this project. Uh, I'm also from Policy Wise for Children and Family, but we also are supporting this project ourselves with some funding. Uh, in terms of the first thing I'd like to do is just do a land acknowledgement. Let's stop sharing. So uh, policy wise for children and families here in Edmonton acknowledges that the land on which we are located is Treaty 6 territory, a traditional meeting ground and home for many indigenous people, including the Nehewak, Nitsitapi, Metis, Nakota Sioux, Penasulana, and Anishinaabe, and many others whose histories, languages, and cultures continue to influence our communities. 
We respect the treaty that was made. We acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past. And we dedicate ourselves to move forward in partnership with Indigenous communities in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. Uh, Darren, did you want to add anything in from your side, from Statistics Canada? Just acknowledging that we are in different places as we're, as we're here uh, in, in this presentation. Indeed, yes, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Benvenu. Um, I'm in spirit of reconciliation with our First Nations and Métis and Inuit brothers and sisters. I am joining you from Winnipeg, Treaty 1 territory, home of the Métis Nation. And I would ask that each of you just took a moment to, uh, to reflect and acknowledge uh, where you're located. I know we're all across the country. So uh, I have colleagues from Statistics Canada joining me if they would like to, to uh, add in where they're. They're joining us from, uh, both joining us from Vancouver. Uh, so they're welcome to also acknowledge uh, the land acknowledgement. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Sarah and Stuart and I are located in Vancouver. It's the unceded territory of the Squamish, Musqueam and Tsleil-Waututh nations. Perfect. Uh, thank you, everyone, and thank you for adding in uh, your own acknowledgments in, in the chat. Uh, it's a very important time, and, and we are dedicated, like I said, to move forward in, in the spirit of, of reconciliation here in policy wise and uh, other organizations as well. Um, so I'm just going to go back. So one last thing before we do get into things today. So I do want to give a little teaser. So we are talking about different data, how to, to navigate the site. So one thing uh, we do do as part of the, the data strategy is we do have updated analyses uh, related to, to topics related to the non-for-profit sector to support them in their, their planning. So one analysis that just came out uh, literally last week, uh, hopefully something uh, useful to you is, is uh, analysis on Statistics Canada data uh, on one of the surveys we'll talk about today, the Canadian Survey and Business Conditions in the, the fourth quarter. Uh, and basically this tells the story of community non-for-profits across Canada in terms of their organizational outlook. How are they doing in income? Uh, how are they doing with their employees? What is being seen across the pandemic? So actually this data spans two years uh, of analysis that we put together uh, in comparisons to other sectors uh, as well as COVID-19 measures. So if you are interested, um, please feel free to go to the, the PolicyWise website. You can see this new analysis as well as others and, and more that will come out in the future. So. Uh, finally, uh, before we get into the things, I just wanted to um, give Robin a chance to give a word from the Alberta Non-for-Profit Data Strategy Steering Committee as one of our, our key leaders. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Um, I'm very excited to be here and I bring my greetings acknowledgement from Treaty 6 as well. I'm located in Edmonton and I'm looking out upon what I think is finally some melting of snow and we're, we're going into the spring season finally. Very excited about that. Just a little bit about us. I know many of you do know, know us and work with us. Uh, we are committed to advancing the well-being and resiliency of the nonprofit sector with a focus on building capacity for wise decision making and specifically for today's session, we are really hoping that the nonprofit sector can demonstrate capabilities related to collecting, using, and sharing data, moving towards being a smart sector. Um, we're not the only champions. I know there's over 100 of you as well with us today that are champions within the nonprofit voluntary sector advocating for more strategic use of data. Having the right information at the right time better equips us to advocate for system change, to better understand, measure, and communicate our impact, to make evidence-informed decisions, to drive program and organizational outcomes, to answer key organizational, community, and sectoral questions. The Alberta Nonprofit Data Strategy was launched in 2018 to enhance our sector's use of data. And led through the collaborative efforts of the Alberta Nonprofit Network, the strategy really sought to, meet, to make meaningful change in three areas, data the sector holds, data the sector needs, and data about the sector. So please refer to our website on progress in relation to those th three areas. The last two years, we've really been focusing about, on data about the sector. And in, this, in our project management role, we put together a steering committee that would help guide this approach to uh, our approach to this goal. And so co-chaired by Mike Brogan, the CEO of Integral Org, who may be here, I'm, I'm not sure, I haven't looked at the participant list, um, and myself, 
The Alberta Nonprofit Steering Committee included leaders of Alberta nonprofits, as well as funders, Imagine Canada, and Statistics Canada. We are extremely grateful to Stats Canada for their time, their expertise, not only during our committee meetings, but in between when they've worked with Matt and my team on our um, Alberta specific analyses. So this webinar today is another example of the kind of commitment to a data informed nonprofit sector that will lead to increased understanding, collaboration and meaningful change. We thank you very much for your participation. I'll turn it over, over to Darren for the good stuff. Thank you. Thank you very much, Robin. I'm so glad you're able to join us. So welcome everyone. I am, uh, before I share my screen, I just wanted to, as you've already gathered, we have uh, two colleagues joining me from Statistics Canada, Sarah Glover and Stuart Dyrell. So I thank them very much for joining us and, and they'll be uh, supporting us if you have questions in the chat and things of that. So let me uh, share my screen and see if we can uh, get started. And uh, can everyone see my screen okay? Yes? Yes. Okay, wonderful. So today, as uh, we sort of alluded to the fact that uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Statistics Canada and our role. We'll spend some time talking about, you know, uh, how important it is that uh, people feel comfortable. So we, we want to build some statistical capacity and data literacy so people are able to use, as Robin and Matt have already alluded to, be able to use data, use information to help you form good decisions and make good decisions and just understand the context in which we find ourselves in. We're going to show you a couple of examples of Statistics Canada data sets. We're going to walk you through the website. And I have to admit that I can't tell you how often I've had people say to me, oh, I went to your website and I got lost. And that's okay. That's part of the process. It's part of the learning process. Hopefully we'll give you some tips that allow you to be a little bit more efficient, a little bit more effective, uh, but it is an immense amount of information there. So we'll try and get, encourage you to don't be so apprehensive and to think about the value that the data that we have there available to you uh, can, can be. And then if we have time, we might give you an opportunity to sort of put into practice what we've talked about today. So sort of you can demonstrate to me that you've actually been listening. And then we'll have, hopefully we'll have some time for some uh, question and answer. And again, hopefully we've sparked your curiosity and encouraged you to sort of, you know, sort of foster this desire to, to learn more about what's available from Statistics Canada. So that's the sort of the objective and the agenda for today. Uh, I will just spend a few moments just talking a little bit about Statistics Canada as you know, for over a hundred years as the National Statistical Agency, we've been providing data to Canadians to help them better understand their population and their, their culture and their economy and their resources. And we are committed to continuing to uh, provide high quality information to help Canadians better understand their country. We're also committed to trying to address data gaps and to build data statistic, uh, data literacy and statistical capacity, which is one of the reasons why we're here today. We're so enthusiastic and encouraged about the idea of sort of being able to show people the amount of information we have and to start to encourage people to use it and use it effectively. We are uh, somewhat proud to say we're one of the leading statistical agencies in the world and we have at any point in time, uh, well over 400 active surveys in the field. So I hope you brought lunch because we're, no, I'm just joking. We're gonna just buy, highlight a couple of those surveys, but there are an, an immense amount of surveys that will, uh, that will be available to you. And so that's one of the things that we wanted to highlight. The other thing I'll speak of very briefly, and we'll talk about it a little bit later is, uh, Sarah, Stuart and myself, we come from the arm of Statistics Canada that's called the Statistical Information Services. And what we do, part of our job is to uh, uh, let people know what information is available, but also help customers and clients uh, work through and maybe identify custom data that might be of in, uh, helpful to you. So that's some of the other things that we do. So that's essentially in, in a nutshell, our role and why we're so happy to be here today. And as already alluded to, one of the other reasons we're happy to, to join you is, you know, for several years now, 
Statistics Canada has been working with the, the nonprofit and, and the voluntary sector to uh, build a more collaborative relationship to try and get an understanding of the type of data needs that, that you're having. One of the commitments that Statistics Canada has been making, uh, particularly since the pandemic, is to identify data gaps and to be uh, more proactive in terms of resolving some of those uh, data gaps, making more aggregate data information available, things of that nature. So it is helpful for us to get a sense of the sort of data needs that the sector itself has. And I know it's a broad and diverse sector with a wide range of, of different needs and considerations and issues, but this is a, a great opportunity for us to also learn from you. We're gonna share with you and we'll identify some recent uh, releases that uh, might be of interest to you. And we're gonna also sort of uh, highlight some of the data sets that uh, are from our data set, from our website in terms of how you're able to find some of that information. So that's sort of the objectives that we have for this session today. Uh, as I said, you know, we're part of statistical information services. So please feel free to reach out to myself or to Sarah uh, if you have questions after the session. Uh, if you're looking for data that may not necessarily be available from a public table, we might be able to help you in that regard. And, and we'll talk a little bit, I won't turn this into a research methods class, but we'll talk a little bit about how helpful it is for people to recognize the distinction between census data, and we'll talk about census data, and survey data, and just recognize some of the limitations that are associated with survey data in terms of how detailed and how of how detailed geographically some of the data can and can't get to. But that's our role. That's what we are here to help you with, is to, is to help people be able to access and use our data. So as I alluded to, you know, with over 400 active surveys, we're not able to cover everything that we would love to, although perhaps in future, we'd be able to spend some time with a specific data set, spend an hour. I could theoretically spend an hour going through the census. Uh, you could spend an hour going through many of these different data sets, but these are sort of the, the data sets we're gonna highlight today as a starting point. So we'll talk about the census and how valuable it is in terms of Statistics Canada's biggest data collection effort and the amount of data that's available at really detailed levels, at detailed variables. We'll talk about general social survey as a tool for collecting information about social issues and as a means for us to identify different themes and, and issues that are of importance to Canadians, particularly to people in the nonprofit or voluntary sector, anywhere from food insecurity to uh, victimization and social identity and how connected people feel to their communities. We are gonna spend a little bit of time just very briefly talking about a data set that people may or may not necessarily be that familiar with, which is the satellite account or nonprofit volunteering, or nonprofits and volunteering. So if you wanted to, have a sense of what is the economic role and the economic impact of the sector in terms of Canada's broader economy. This is where some of that data is available. And we'll talk about survey household spending. This is, can be crucial for many of you, particularly if you're looking at issues like food insecurity, data on households by income, quintiles and things of that nature. We'll talk about the labor force survey uh, as one of the tools we use to collect labor market information. And we'll talk about COVID and the impact that COVID has had and the different data strategies Statistics Canada has been using to collect information to allow us to track and to uh, get a sense of the impact, whether it's economic impact or the social impact of COVID. So we'll talk very briefly about some of the data sets that we would like you to be familiar with and encourage you to, to delve uh, in more detail. So let's talk very briefly about the census. And, uh, as I said, I'm going to touch on these very briefly, and then we'll go to the website. The main focus today is to do a bit of a navigation of the website, but we'll talk about some basic uh, data sets that have been identified as of particular pertinence to the sector. And obviously the census is, is going to be one of the most important data sets for, for virtually everyone out there. We are in a, a period where the new data from the 2021 census is being released. And I find it helpful for people who are not familiar with the census or not familiar with data. Uh, I find it helpful to, to remind people or to let them know 
about how census data gets released. People may have heard last month when we had the initial release from the 2021 census, and people all think, wow, oh good, all the census data is available. Can I get the visible minority household income for my neighborhood? Well, at some point, but not just yet. So there is a, a schedule, a, a strategy in terms of how census information is released. And we'll talk about that. I'll point you to the different release schedules, but it's just important for you to recognize what type of information is included in the census and when it's scheduled to be released. And then think about how that information can be used in terms of any of the research questions you may have, uh, funding proposals, things of that nature. So the census is, as I've said, probably the most important data collection uh, effort that Statistics Canada undertakes. It's the most comprehensive, and it's the data set that allows us to collect the most comprehensive information for very specific variables at down to very specific geographical uh, levels. So it's an immense data set, but it's only conducted every five years. So you need to think about in terms of uh, how powerful the census can be in terms of setting a benchmark. If you wanna look at evaluation, how well programs are doing, the census is gonna be key. So the census, sometimes I like to joke that it's easier to say what's not included in the census than talk about what is. But the census is gonna give you information about your population, about your age structure. My background is demography. So age structure is a key driver of needs and service requirements and things of that nature. We'll talk, the census provides information about education, uh, family type, the changing nature of families and how the how sort of living arrangements are, are changing over time. We we'll talk about uh, ethnicity and immigration status, labor force participation, language. Are we providing the services in the languages that our, our communities need? The census will give you a sense of how diverse those language needs are. Uh, data on the Aboriginal or the Indigenous population. Uh, and a whole host of other uh, variables, income and things of that nature. So it's an immense data set. And if you haven't worked with the census, I encourage you to become familiar with it. And again, if you have questions, reach out to us. We're happy to help. We're help, happy to foster that sort of ability to use census information uh, effectively. So the census is a starting point. General Social Survey is another data set that is, or we identified as being particularly pertinent to this sector. And, you know, the General Social Survey looks at providing information on a whole host of different sort of social trends and social issues that might be facing Canadians. Um, it's a great data source for people who are looking at, at policy issues and things of that nature. And the way the General Social, the social Survey is structured is we have specific themes each cycle that we delve into in detail. And each theme is delved into approximately five to seven years. So right now there are about seven main themes that we're looking at. Um, one of them that may be of particular importance to you is caregiving, care receiving, we have an aging population. Uh, there's whole increasing question about this whole lack of, of care poverty and, and, the, and the care economy. We have, uh, a cycle that looks at how people, social identity and how people feel, whether they feel connected to their community, uh, victimization, are they, are they fearful? Are, they, are, are there issues that uh, they're facing? So a whole host of, of data that might be available to groups that are particularly uh, pertinent in the nonprofit sector. And we'll, I'll show you, hopefully we'll have time. I'll show you a couple of tables uh, from the general social survey that might allow us to sort of get a sense of what's uh, available and what you can do with the data. The satellite account I've sort of alluded to already in terms of we have at Statistics Canada uh, a, 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 what's called the system of national accounts. And it's essentially the, the system we have in place to uh, measure gross domestic product, economic impacts, economic inputs, economic outputs, and things of that nature. And starting in 2005, we've developed a satellite account. Satellite accounts are essentially part of the system of national accounts, but they allow a little bit more flexibility to delve into some specific topics and things of that nature. And 2005, we developed one on the nonprofit institutions and volunteering. 
to try and get a sense of the economic impact that the sector has and the sec the economic impact that the, the sector has with other sectors in the economy. So a satellite account is going to give you that type of information. And we'll talk a little bit about some of the, if I have time, I'll show you a couple of tables that will provide sort of a two different approaches to it. You can get a sense of what's the economic impact and role of the sector in the broader economy, but you can also look at what are the, some of the characteristics in terms of people who are employed in the sector by subsector, health, culture, education, um, full part-time employment, wages, things of that nature. So these can be, if you're not familiar with these data sets, they can be immensely helpful for you to get a sense of how the sector plays or fits into the broader uh, economy uh, of Canada and how it relates to other sectors. So that's an important sector we felt we wanted to highlight before we get into the, to the, the website. Survey of household spending, if people are not familiar, uh, it's gonna provide information on households. It's a source that allow you to look at uh, spending by income quintile. So if you looked at, at the issues in terms of, and I'll talk a little bit about COVID, how COVID has sort of exacerbated the existing inequalities that have become even more and more apparent. Well, the survey of household spending is one of those data sets that allows you to look at what uh, households are spending on different items uh, by income quintiles. So you'll get a sense of not just spending, but also by household characteristics. Are they owners? Are they renters? What are some of the things that families are spending on? Uh, what are some of the things that, that households are spending on and things of that nature? Um, so this could be crucially important. Uh, it's, a, it's a data set if you're looking at community economic development, a whole host of, of uh, potential opportunities that are available from the survey of household spending. And then the labor force survey. Labor force survey is, I think without a doubt, one of the flagship surveys of Statistics Canada. Uh, over the last two years, when Stats Can employees were told we have to go home and work from home, we never missed conducting and disseminating the labor force survey in the two year period. So it is one of the most important uh, sources of data. It is one of the tools we use, there are others. There's the survey of employment and payroll hours. There's the job vacancy survey. Uh, there are other tools we use to collect labor market information, but the labor force survey is one of the most important data sources, uh, data sets in terms of uh, information on how people are faring, what's happening with the, with the employment characteristics and things of that nature by hours of work, by arrangements. Are they working full-time? Are they working part-time uh, by sector? So it's an immensely important uh, data set to, to be familiar with. And, uh, and we wanted to make sure that we highlighted this as one of the labor market information data sets that people need to be familiar with. And just before I go on, I, you know, I, I wanna talk about COVID, but I don't wanna turn this into a research methods class, but I've talked about the census and a census is by definition, a, a complete enumeration of the entire population at a particular point in time. And a survey is data that's collected usually from a random sample, a representative sample. And so the distinction there is important because people will often look at the census and say, oh, I can get data down to census tracts, neighborhoods in a sense. How come I can't do the same from some of the surveys? And it's because the surveys are just that, they're sample surveys, they're based on a sample, not the entire population. And so you just need to recognize that there are limitations to all data sets. And that's one of the factors that researchers, particularly people who are new to data, sometimes struggle with is recognizing the, the limitations in terms of the detail or the level of geography that might be available. But that doesn't dissuade you. We would never want to dissuade you from still using these data sets as an immensely important data set. As Robin said, to build this notion, to build this culture of using data to help us understand the world and to make good decisions. So that's some of the data sets. The other point we wanted to sort of highlight very quickly was just the, the whole perspective with respect to COVID and the impact that the COVID and the pandemic has had. And stats can has been committed to uh, uh, collecting and providing information um, during the pandemic. So, you know, we've strengthened our commitment to starting to make sure that we provide timely, 
useful information because the pandemic has identified the need for good data, the timely data, disaggregate data. So we've, you know, prior to the pandemic, we as an organization had identified the need to address data needs, but the pandemic has pushed us to really make an even stronger commitment to, uh, to look at different data collection methods. So we're looking at administrative data, we're looking at crowdsourcing, we're looking at different ways of making sure that we have information that people can use. And we're committed to continue that, um, uh, that collection and dissemination of COVID related data and its impact on the economy. And, and you know, just think about the sort of the indirect impact COVID has had on health, uh, the, the impact it's had on issues like social cohesion, the uh, stress that, that it's put on families and businesses in terms of from a financial perspective. And, uh, you know, perhaps most importantly, as I've said, it sort of has exacerbated and underlined those existing inequalities in terms of what resources people have, how resilient people can be. So we are committed to continue to collect and, and present information uh, about COVID and the impact of COVID uh, going forward. So there are, a, there are a host of different data sets that, we, that are available as part of our COVID uh, hub. Uh, you know, we look at the Canadian Business Survey, as, as Matt has already alluded to, uh, some of the information that's available there. We could look at the impacts in terms of health. We could look at uh, um, impacts on mental health and things of that nature. We've actually even started to have some supplementary information that's available from the labor force that looks specifically at labor force characteristics of, of the visible minority population and things of that nature. So we're, we're trying to make the data that people are looking for available. So, I will show you the, the COVID hub when we get to the website, but it's a little bit too immense to cover in one slide, but I, I want you to sort of recognize the type of data that's available and how you might be able to use it and uh, how it might be able to help. With that, before we go forward, I, I think we have a poll we'd like to ask. This is sort of making sure you're still awake and my lecture hasn't put you to sleep yet. So uh, please. <laughs> Oh, Darren, you're, you're doing fantastic. I really, really like all the information uh, you're sharing. Um, I'm excited for the, the surveys. I hope others are as well. Um, so um, could you stop share for, for the screen just for a second? Um, sure. And uh, so basically now for the survey, we're going to give you a chance. So this is the Alberta Non-for-Profit Data Strategy. So it's about you. It's not about us. It's about what your needs are, what you want to hear, all of that stuff. So we are thinking about the next steps in the, in the, the training series. And one thing we are exploring is, is those different data sets we can go into more in depth. And, and Darren's already said it. There's lots of things we can talk about for these data sets. Um, so basically, based on what we had talked about today, uh, we're going to give you a poll. Uh, and you'll get a chance to select all of the ones you're really interested in. I would suggest uh, selecting your top three so we can really whittle it down into what is the biggest priority for that next session uh, for a training. Then we can have uh, that discussion to, to really figure out when we can have those next opportunities to, to learn more about things. So um, Courtney, if you could uh, put that on the screen, uh, send us in the poll. Um, just make sure that you do scroll down with this because there's lots of different choices uh, you can select. Uh, there should be one, two, ten total. And we're just going to give you a couple a couple of minutes because we want to make sure we have lots of time to go into all the trainings.
Okay, it looks like it, it slowed down. Um, so I think we'll give you your last opportunity to finish the poll. And then we'll be just stopping real quick now. Last 10 seconds. Okay, um, so we'll just briefly share the results. Um, so basically, uh, so looking at this, we have a few that pop out. It does look like the satellite count is a very popular one, uh, giving uh, volunteering participations, another big one, and the census. Uh, those are all three big topics that make sense for the, the non-for-profit uh, data strategy and your, your needs. Uh, so we'll talk more about these and, and we'll let you know in the future uh, what, what, what we'll be doing to support you. So thank you very much for your input uh, and it will be considered as we move forward. So. Thank you very much, and I'll give it back to, to Darren to continue his, his wonderful training. So. Well, thank you, Matt. So I'm a data nerd by heart. I look at that distribution. That's a lot of, that's a lot of variability. In that. I'm almost tempted to go into discussion about normal distributions and kurtosis and how flat <laughs> the distribution is, but I'm going to stop myself from doing that. <laughs> And I want to, uh, I will share my screen again, and I'm going to uh, take you to the website. Hopefully this works. Take you to the website, and we'll, we'll start doing a little bit of a navigation, and I'll point you to some, some tips and techniques that, uh, that might help you uh, find your way around Statistics website, Statistics Canada's website. So I am going to uh, share my screen. Can everyone just confirm that you can see my screen is oh, sorry see the stats can uh, website on my screen everyone is good okay so this is i'm I, obviously if you you want to go to stats can website it's a www uh, statcan.gc.ca uh, i i'm i'm hoping you all have it bookmarked uh, but let's just recognize uh, the one of the first things i like to do is to um, sort of talk about the fact that the website affords you the opportunity to get to the same sections in different ways. When I show people, or I do these workshops on navigating StatScan's website, I like to draw people's attention to these sort of tabs, tabs along the top of the websites. So we have a tab on subject, tab on data, analysis, reference, geography, census, statistical surveys, and about Canada and Canada.ca. But I also like to remind people that of those eight tabs on the top, if you were to scroll down Statistics Canada's website and you click on access data or find census data, those will take you to the same place that those tabs at the top will do. So there's a bit of redundancy built in. And, and so I like to joke around that one of the great things about StatsCan's website is you can get to the same place from different ways. And one of the worst things about StatsCan websites, you can get to the same place from different ways. So sometimes people are a little bit confused in terms of how they found or got to the different uh, uh, sources that they found. So that's one thing I like to highlight just from the beginning. And then of course, if you scroll down a little bit further, we'll talk a little bit, it gives you a little bit of information about statistics, the Statistics Act, which I'm sure you're all reading. Uh, it's, a, it's a page turner. Um, information about our organization, the corporate structure, the uh, chief statistician, Anil Aurora, who's, uh, who's actually going to be uh, doing a presentation later today, and our minister. And so information about the agency and then some information in terms of the different hubs, what we're calling hubs. We're trying to sort of collect information and put them in, in a very convenient sources where people can find a wide diversity of information about particular themes and topics in one place. So that's just sort of as people scroll through the, the website, but I like to sort of start at the outset by reminding people that uh, there are different ways to get information about Statistics Canada. One of the first, as I've said here, is you can sign up to MyStatCan and you'll be notified of uh, information topics that you've identified, you'll get notified. Um, I always like to highlight the daily, which is, this name's not that imaginative, but it's our daily newsletter and the daily. And we have also moved to a, a little bit more of a data storytelling approach as opposed to just numbers. So we've got this uh, uh, new version of StatsCan, StatsCan, or not new version of the daily, 
called StatCan Plus. And it's trying to uh, provide a little bit more context throughout the day, a little bit more context, a little bit of a storytelling component, component to the information so people can get a sense of, of how and why this information is important. I am not, as you can gather, uh, a, a person who's that attached to social media, but I, I obviously draw your attention to the different social media platforms that Statistics Canada has. So think about uh, what we've got here, Facebook and uh, Instagram and Twitter. I think that's what those are. I'm off those things. I don't go on those things, but teach his own. Uh, so those are just the starting point I like to highlight in terms of getting you started. Uh, I like to always direct people to the daily. If you look at the daily for today, you'll see that uh, uh, I've just clicked on the daily. You'll see that our release, one of the releases today was uh, the job vacancy survey. So I talked about the labor labor force survey as one of the main tools for our labor, labor market information, where the other is the survey of employment and payroll hours. Labor force survey is collected from individuals. S survey of employment and payroll hours is collected from employers. That's monthly, both of them are monthly. And then the job vacancy survey is released quarterly. And it gives an indication of the, the gap in terms of jobs in demand and, and jobs that employers are looking to fill. So it's, a, it's an important data set that uh, you know, it's useful for to be familiar with. And just as an aside, I, as I, I like to remind people how important the daily is. If you wanted to, once you've clicked on the daily, if you go to the release schedule, you can get an indication of what's going to be released day, next week, next month, whatever it might be. So you'll get a sense of what's coming down the road and you can identify or maybe identify sources that you would be interested to know about and what day they're going to be available. So those are just some of the starting points that I like to, uh, to uh, highlight when I introduce people to Statistics Canada's website. But let's go back to, oh, I'm running out of time. Let's go back to the eight tabs at the top of the page and quickly go through each of them and just walk you through how valuable they can be. So the subject, as, I, as, as you can gather, if you click on subject, there are basically 31 main themes that the information is uh, sort of categorized around on our website. And so if you're interested in, in population and demography or uh, agriculture data or labor force characteristics, but you're not quite sure a particular table or anything of that nature, this is often a really good starting point is to, to look at the main themes in which we categorize our information and see whether or not that's gonna provide you uh, what you're looking for. And then you can go into greater detail. So that's often a, a, a point where I would like to uh, sort of identify or sort of point people to when they're getting started and they're not quite clear. There's also, a, it's helpful to sort of point you to a particular um, hubs such as the gender and diversity and inclusion statistics. So this is where we uh, collect information from various sources but with a focus on gender-based analysis. Uh, we have also got a dimensions on Poverty Hub, which might be particularly pertinent to some of the, in the nonprofit or voluntary sector. If you're looking at uh, uh, you know, food insecurity and poverty and the, the different measures of low income and things of that nature. So those are important sources as a starting point. The other tab that I'll draw your attention to is uh, the data tab. And here you can actually look for or identify particular data tables. So for example, I talked about the, um, the um, uh, satellite accounts. And there's one table that might be of particular interest to some of your in sector. It's table 36-10-0615. So, so if I want to look up that particular table, I'm just gonna enter it into the uh, keyword search here. And it will pull up this table and you'll get a sense of what information is available at what level of geography. So we simply click on the, the as our French colleagues say, the loop, the, uh, the uh, eyeglass here, and it will take me to the specific table that I'm referred to. And this is a table that provides information about employment in nonprofit institutions by activity. So by culture, education, recreation, things of that nature. So for people who are not familiar, um, you can click on the table and it takes you to the different, uh, takes you to the actual data table. I won't have time to go into every table that I'd love to go to, but I just wanted to draw your attention to a couple of things. When these tables come up, you'll see that there are different options. You can 
amend or add or change the variables. You can go down to the very bottom if you wanna get a better sense of more information about the table. And you can also go to right here called add or remove data. And this is a crucially important uh, button on, on many of our data tables because it gives you the opportunity to go in and, and, class, uh, and customize the type of information you're looking for. So, so, so here we've got information by uh, culture, recreation, health, and things of that nature. It also tells you what level of geography is available. And one of the reasons or one of the things I like to do when I'm teaching the navigating the website is, as you may have seen, when I, when I went to the data tab, there are approximately 9,000 tables on Statistics Canada's website. And I calculated it once. If you were to spend 30 seconds looking at each one of those tables, it would take approximately four weeks. So one of the things I like to do is the it help people think about how can I be more efficient in sort of finding what I'm looking for. And one of the things that can be really helpful is to, you'll have a sense of what level of geography you want. It might be for a particular city, it might be for a particular province. When you look at a data table, one of the first things that's helpful to do is just look at the thing here that says geography, Canada province, and that will tell you just in an instant, what level of information, what level of data the information is available for. So if you know you need provincial data and the table says Canada, move on. That table is not going to provide what you're looking for. And that happens sometimes. That's the nature of the, of the reality of data. So it's just one quick way to, to get a sense of, is this table going to give me what I'm looking for? And if not, what other tables are available? And you could look to see related tables uh, and related products. And it might point you to the table that you need. So that's one first little tip I like to remind people. And it's just a way to become more efficient, more effective, uh, to find the information you need in a more uh, an efficient manner. The other important consideration, and we, I have a, a colleague who's been with StatScan for about 30 years, and he's been working with clients for, for many years. And he was mentioning how he showed this to a client, and the client was like, wow, I didn't realize that's, that you could do that. And so if you go to click and add remove data, a window opens up that allows you to customize what level or amount of data or information you want. So if you see a variable, and I'm using research language, if you see a variable with a plus sign in front of it, it means that there's more information available if you double click it. So it says Canada here, but if I double click this, I now have the opportunity to select any of the different provinces. And so I can select West Ontario or, or I can deselect all of them and select just a particular province or I can select all of them. It gives you an opportunity to customize what data you're looking for. And if you go to the variable tab, you can look to see, well, this variable has employment information. If there were more detailed information, there would be a plus sign in front of it we can identify the employment. And then look at the subsector. I can say I want or I don't want total nonprofit institutions. If I don't want it, I simply deselect it and that's not included in the table. And then activity, total activities. And again, you could look at how much detail is it? Are you only interested in education and research sector activities? Then select that one and, and don't select any of the others. And you can select the reference period. In this case, data is available back to 2007 to 2020. And once you've identified the variables you want at the level of detail you want, you click apply and you're gonna get the data table up here below. And then you can download the table. There's download options here in terms of as a CS CSV file, CSV file with notes, without notes, and things of that nature. So there's a host of different, if you're doing a data loading or working on uh, different data, there are other uh, formats, but CSV format is gonna be the most common format. you save that and you can save it as an Excel work file. So that's one way to get access to the data that you're looking for. And then once you've got the table and you realize, well, that's not really what I want. Uh, I don't wanna have to scroll across and see the promises. You can go to the customized tab and if I want geographies in the row, as opposed to column, I simply click and say apply. 
and the table gets changed and theoretically might become a little bit easier to read. So those are some quick tips that we want people to be familiar with in terms of finding data tables, customizing the variables as part of the data tables, and uh, downloading the files to be able to work with them in whatever format you, you want, SPSS, SAS, uh, R, uh, Excel, whatever, whatever format that you might be looking for. So that's a quick introduction to the data set and the table. So again, subjects, if you're trying to do sort of exploratory, look at the subjects. If you know what data tables you have, or if you have an idea, you can pinpoint particular data tables. If you're looking for analysis and reference material, so oftentimes we have data tables, but we also have reports and analysis that we provide. So if you're looking for not the data, but you're looking for an interpretation, you can go to the analysis or, and this, I cannot stress this enough, the reference tab. The reference tab for anyone who's working with data is going to be crucially important because knowing the metadata, knowing how things are defined, knowing how the data was collected is crucially important in terms of you using and understanding data accurately and effectively. So the reference file, or the reference file, the reference tab is going to be crucially important for you to go to get user guides, census dictionary, and all those other tools that are so crucially important for us to be, for you to be able to use and the data accurately and effectively. And I wish there was a shortcut, but there is you do there is no shortcut. You do have to know your data well to be able to communicate it, to be able to make that data meaningful and sing and speak out. And part of that knowing your data well is knowing the metadata, knowing the reference information behind it. So those are two crucial uh, aspects that are not necessarily data specific, but the analysis and the reference are gonna be crucial for allowing you to use the information accurately. And then we have uh, geography. So if you wanted to look at particular geographic areas, we could use the reference tool. You could look at uh, some of the thematic maps and reference maps for dissemination areas or census tracts or things of that nature. Economic regions, if you want to look at the boundaries for economic regions. And so that's where you'll go for some of the spatial information. If you're looking for sh shape files, uh, you can download some of those here. And then the census. And the census is, I really want to make sure we cover this. If you go to the census tab, it, you'll see there's census of population and then census of agriculture. Census of Agriculture is also done every five years. I'm not gonna go into it, but it's essentially, as its name applies, it's a census of agricultural operations, types of uh, products and things of that nature. But the census is, is what I wanna make sure we, we're familiar with. So if you go to the census main page, you'll see the census of population, census of agriculture, census of engagement information. And if you go to the census of population, uh, you'll get a sense here of the next release. So the next release is gonna be April 27th in 36 days, and we're gonna be releasing age and sex data as well as type of dwelling. And if you look at the release plan, here's the actual the scheduled release for the main themes of census information. So Canadian families, many of you are likely particularly interested in how the family, Canadian families are changing over time. Uh, income profile of Canadians, how well people are faring or, or suffering as a result of the, the economic turmoil we're facing. Linguistic diversity is August 17th. We'll have data on mother tongue, mother, first language learned and still understood, people's ability to converse in English and French. Uh, September 21st, the First Nations Aboriginal uh, data, Indigenous data, as well as housing. So again, I started by talking about how important it is to recognize that yes, census data for 2021 is starting to come out, but it's not released all at one time. There's a release schedule. And being familiar with that release schedule is gonna be helpful for you. Um, and then of course, if you want more information about particular uh, surveys, you can go to the statistics, surveys and statistical programs, a section that'll give you information. If you're a lucky soul who gets selected to be participating in a Statistics Canada survey, you want to verify, you want more information about it, you can come here. And then we have information about Statistics Canada and the tab that will take you to the Government of Canada website per se. So I'm looking at my watch. 
If you haven't gathered by now, I could spend all day talking about stats and data, but I, I wanna make sure we leave some time for questions and we have a bit of an activity. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen right there. I hope that's a, a proof of, of interest. I'm just gonna share the PowerPoint again and uh, our website and activity discussion. I don't know how people feel. I don't know if we have time, but we do have, well, maybe we'll give you homework. Uh, we do have a little activity for you to just try and get a sense of what we've shown you. Can you take that question and um, and sort of answer the question? I don't know, Matt. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it back to the host to see how they feel because I would like to um, leave some time for question and answer. But here's uh -huh. the question we're gonna leave you with. If you wanted to look at this question and maybe try and answer it. So, Matt, sorry to interject. Go ahead. So I just wanted to, to say thanks to everyone because I do realize some people will be heading out uh, for the lunch hour or, or for different things uh, right now. Um, we can stay on a few more minutes for, for those questions, um, but I will be stopping the recording at that point probably just so we have the, the period here. Um, we will be providing the, the full uh, presentation will be placed online on that PolicyWise website. Uh, as well, we'll be including these questions and the exercises in terms of the activities. So you have a chance to go through, try these things out, listen to, think about some of those things and, and have a, a way to engage with those uh, uh, activities. But I just wanna say a huge thanks to Statistics Canada, a huge thanks to Darren for his great presentation, talking about all of these, these great surveys, uh, how to use the, uh, the website, I, I feel like I learned a lot and, and there's some buttons I want to click on now. Uh, I will say I really like the geospatial stuff yesterday when I saw there was a new release there. Um, but whatever it is, uh, go in, uh, use it, and we will be having future uh, opportunities in this, this training, uh, uh, training series that we'll get back to you and, and we'll advertise in the future. So we hope to see you there. Um, I'll give some minutes to, to Darren, but uh, Courtney, if you could stop the recording now for the, this part, just so we have this uh, sort of, this is the, the presentations to, to put online. And then if there are any last questions, you can type them in the chat or 